And it's all good. Okay. <laughs> Cold uh, open, baby. It was recording. Welcome to Was It Good, the podcast that reviews movies and TV shows. Today we're talking Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. I'm Ravi, joined by my two brothers, Arjuna, Krishna, and our producer, Michael. And oh. we are Was It oh. Good. And we are Was It Good. Nope, nope. Nailed it. it. We got two this time. Well, kind of three. We are Was three. It Good. Before we kick into the into the podcast, I, I want to bring up... Um, as we're talking Dungeons and Dragons, Dungeons and Dragons is probably one of the more interesting uh, merchandising things that you can get into. And um, AMC obviously loves to capitalize on merchandise when it comes to various movies and things. And Arjuna, unfortunately, is a sucker for these merchandise things, specifically the popcorn tin collection I am. that true. Arjuna has been gathering and collecting for the better part, I think, of like five years. It's more. More than f- oh wow okay well anyway Arjuna me and Michael we obviously saw Dungeons and Dragons you were busy and couldn't make it um, but we we did end up getting you a little gift uh, from the AMC uh, in Burbank so take a look <gasps> wow <laughs> what holy shit yes wow that this is incredible insane. <laughs> Should I roll for initiative? Uh, yeah. I was actually going to say, like, should we? we is I there got a way, 19. Is there a way we could incorporate this, like, gigantic? So for those, obviously, if you're, if you're listening, because it's a podcast, I just gave Arjuna the popcorn tin that AMC and the D&D movie collabed on. And it's basically a tin uh, shaped like a 20-sided dice. Um, it's, I believe you can roll it technically, right? It's a, yeah, yeah, roll it on the ground. Like, Why not? Here we go. Yeah, Here we go. We're going to roll it. And Juna got a... 12. 12. 12. All that, right. What does that mean? What, I guess we could roll modifiers. We could roll it Minus into six. like Oh, yeah, you failed. <laughs> we could we could roll it into like determine like what we're going to talk about. Wait. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, my yeah, dice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's mine now. We should have built a dice table out of the talking points. <laughs> we still could. I could throw it into Chad GTP. <laughs> I'm going to oh hold this scene. No, it means the pod, pod needs to last 120 minutes. What? Right there, you oh, go. That's what it means. Or twelve minutes. Or twelve minutes. We have yeah. Oh, we only have seven minutes. You guys have twelve left. minutes. <laughs> twelve minutes to do an entire pod. <laughs> I'm probably done. Are you ready for this one? I'm probably my favorite movie of 2023. Whoa! Wow. What a bold Coming statement. In. Bold. There we go. Coming in hot. Woo! So I mean, that makes me happy to hear. But uh, damn. <laughs> what other movies have come out this year? I'm, I'm I have a list. Black. I have my rankings. I have a list too. Oh, Juna, you've been ranking. Huh? Arjuna uh, told me he's like, "Hey, you need to start." We, it's good to like write down oh, the movies. No, that it's you've true. Seen. So yeah. we, we we've seen things such as Plane, Missing, <laughs> Knock at the Cabin, <laughs> Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, Cocaine Bear, Creed Three, D and D movie. I'm sure I'm missing some like smaller ones that I've watched at home and not necessarily in the theater. But like that's you my saw list. Champions, all right? I did see Champions. Oh, I gotta add that to my what, list. What's, what's Champions? Champions? That was a. It was a movie with um, Woody, Woody Harrelson, Harrelson, and he's a basketball coach. And Caitlin Olsen. Oh, you saw oh, that? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And Caitlin Olsen from uh, Always, Sunny. Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. Ravi, really? Did someone make you watch a sports movie? No, I decided to go on my own free will. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> and People then I was watching it. Crazy. I was watching. I was like, wow, I really don't miss fucking sports and journalism. Sports. <laughs> Sports journalism is poor shit. I've seen I've seen seventeen movies that have come out in twenty twenty three. Wow, that's a lot of movies. Yeah, I've seen an unknown amount. You want to know what last on my list is? Ant Man and the Wasp. Plane. Really? <laughs> oh. I rank what do you mean? Really? Higher than Ant Man and the Wasp. That movie and that experience was so fucking weird. I mean, I just remember the ramen place that we went to. Silver Lake ramen was the best part of that. It was really good food. Yeah, that's great. I'm also really hungry right now. <laughs> Now I am. You want some of my well. popcorn? Well, so funny story. Okay, <laughs> okay, so so we obviously Lerman and I go see the movie. Um, Lerman's already gotten popcorn. He's in the theater, and like we watch the movie, and I think uh, Sahara or June's fiance texts our group chat, and is like, "Hey, can you guys like? Is there a possibility if there are any more tins? Because you know, obviously, our June's a collector." Uh, so originally I was like, nah, let's just go. We don't need to check this. <laughs> and Lerman's like, we actually leave. And Lerman's like, no, let's go. We're right here. Thanks. <laughs> well, so it's I, really Lerman. <laughs> I, I saw that's the 10. Hilarious. I didn't think they had them because I got popcorn. So yeah. I was like, that's why I texted back. Like, oh, sorry, I didn't have them. But then we're walking out and I see one sitting on the thing. And I'm like, 
oh, I can't leave without doing this. So, so Thank we, you, Michael. So we go and we get it. And, and obviously we, we get it after we see the movie. And they the, give you popcorn, right? Well, the attendant's like, oh, so it comes with free popcorn. And me and Michael are like, no, we're, we're good. We do not yeah, want any more popcorn. So full. I was sick of popcorn. You should have like given it to the person behind you or something. Well, that would have been fucking it, smart, wouldn't it? <laughs> they would have put it in the ten, and then we would have had to give uh, them I mean, the you, ten. You could ask for it. With I mean, if you wanted to ten. give the person behind us the ten, that would have been That's a nice true. thing of you. Uh, this yeah. is my, my, my most. This is my most prized possession. Now I'll never let it <laughs> oh, popcorn. Wow. Yep, I'm just gonna carry around this giant tin for the rest of my life. Oh, uh, well, you, that's you, a great you, idea. You, you never D- know when you need a, a, a D20. Exactly. Well, also, your popcorn tin collection is probably like. Similar to like you know, remember the '90s with the McDonald's toys, yeah, and like a lot. Of, some of those toys were thousands of dollars. I have the now, I like, have Thor's hammer, the, the Thor's the tin. hammer tin from yeah. last summer. I have this one. I have the Fast and Furious Nine one, which like spins really cool. The Creed Three one wasn't very cool. I didn't what was that one? <laughs> it was literally just like vinyl plastic, and it was just kind of curved. And I was like, I'm gonna skip that one. Damn, it should have been a boxing glove. It should have. But it was That's a maybe it was, and it just wasn't well done. There was another one that was really cool that I didn't get. What was it? I can't remember. Anyway, let's get back into D and D and not Arjuna's popcorn collection. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, um, me calling it D and D. Obviously, it's actually called Dungeons and Dragons: Honor Among Thieves. But going forward, uh, I'm probably going to refer to it as D and D. So yeah, that works. Please get over that. Um, let's start with one word impressions, and let's kick off. You know, Krishna has been very quiet because uh, he is jealous that I didn't get him a tin. So it's true, actually. Krishna, let's hear your one word impression for D and D Honor Among Thieves. Nice. My one word impression is very basic, very simple. It's going to be hilarious. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Ravi and Lehman are probably sick of hearing this by now because I think I've told I told Lehman at least three times. <laughs> Tell me the three movie. more. Tell me three more. <laughs> yeah, the movie was so much funnier than I was expecting. Um, I think from almost the beginning of the movie to the end, I was chuckling at every couple of minutes. It was, and I expected the movie to be funny. Chris Pine's in it, so you know you're expecting you know some of that like witty banter and kind of humorous stuff in there. But the whole movie, just out, even outside of Chris Pine, was was just so funny, uh, and that really worked for this movie. And it makes sense, too. Um, Arjuna kind of informed us who some of the writers were behind this, the directors. So it makes sense that it would it, it was that funny. It came out that way. And it worked. It really worked for this. I, Great I think, time. I think, Chris, like, speaking of Chris Pine, like I'm glad he did this movie, um, especially after his... Interesting performance from uh, was it? Don't, Don't worry. worry, darling. Yes, he's actually great in that movie. He's creepy as exactly. Hell. He's great, so creepy. <laughs> but I never look at Chris Pine as like he's got not range. like like not like like that. I don't like seeing him in that creepy role because like you know he his big break role for me anyway was obviously Star Trek. It was for him as well. Um, playing obviously <laughs> Captain Kirk. I mean, it was kind of for him. <laughs> no, in, 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 in an interview I saw, he yeah, said yeah. that that was his breakout role. Kirk. It was just yeah. funny how, like, the timing you said that. It was, like, it was for him. It was for well. Him as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was nice seeing him in this. He's like, the best fun, of the Chris's. Yes. You know? He really is. Yeah. He's not trying to sell me a fake workout that really needs steroids behind it in order to be successful. Wait, which just Chris is sell that? Sell me the steroids. Hemsworth. <laughs> oh, that makes oh, sense. Oh, man. Yeah, his, his entire Chris Hemsworth is like workout app and the idea is like, oh, you can look like Thor. And it's like, no, you need <laughs> steroids to get there. <laughs> you can look like Thor. No, with enough hard from... work and whey protein, you can look like Wait, that. Wait, did, spe- did he specify which Thor? He could have been talking about <laughs> Thor Endgame. Oh, dad yeah. bod. Yeah, I'm, Adventures I'm, Endgame. I'm already oh, there. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah, he, that's if he didn't smart. specify, you that's know. That's very true, actually. There that's on me. I apologize, Mr. Hemsworth. <laughs> Please don't come for me. But Please do sell those me. steroids you're taking. I'll take them. <laughs> Junior, your one word impression? Uh, I'm going to go with classic. Mm. Yeah. Classic. Why? <laughs> uh, the reason I'm going to go with classic is this felt like a. Watching this movie felt like I was back in the like early 2000s in the best way possible, where. There were, like, you would go, like, you guys remember, we would go to movies, mm-hmm. like, Sunday mornings, mm-hmm. and we would go, like, every few weeks or every month. Right. It was a and treat. We, it was a treat. Yeah. 
and it would it would feel like we would go see normally like a big type of action blockbuster family friendly movie, right? Mm-hmm. So like a PG thirteen type of movie that was filled with action and adventure and comedy. And this is what this felt like. This was it felt like a treat. It felt like a movie that was for everybody in some way, shape, or form. That had a little bit of everything: a little romance, a little action, a little adventure, a little comedy. You know, and it was just a really great balance. It was a cast that worked well. It was a story that was interesting, um, and had had me at least interested throughout the whole movie and hooked throughout the whole movie. And it just felt like a classic. I was like a little bummed when the movie ended. I was like, oh, I'm like having a good time and having a good hang, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it just, it was, it was a classic for me. Definitely. I think it's because of the, the cast yeah. and anytime you have a strong cast that really work well together and then you're presented an interesting story where it, it makes sense and there's good history and backstory. Yeah, you're right. It's like, you feel like you're part of the group. You're like, you're hanging out. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Like, yeah, when it ended, it was like, oh, I kind of want more. Yeah. I was like, oh, wow. You know, like, I think we're all a bit, we're in an age now where we're, like, IP fatigued, right? Where, like, you know, all the Marvels and the Star Wars and everything, I think, like, generally speaking, people are like, oh, here we go. Here's another Marvel movie. Oh, you know, here's another. And that's become synonymous with Blockbuster, right? Right. And obviously D&D is part of a larger IP. Very large Uh, IP, actually. And we're going to have a conversation probably later about the the future of what Paramount wants to do with this IP. But I thought it was Warner Brothers for something. No, it was Paramount. Paramount. Wow, good Uh, for you guys. But, (laughs) yeah, it, it felt refreshing in some way like <laughs> you know everything is cyclical right so right. that's also why i go classic but like it it felt like oh there's more than just like here's the next marvel star wars dc movie that's coming out and that's like, connected to when the guy put his coffee mug down and yeah, exactly. everything's changed yeah. Yeah. careful what you wish for though as you pick up your coffee mug <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's setting oh, his no, coffee no, mug no, that, down. That was the one that Tony Stark's long That's brother s- used, and now you have the Tony Stark armor. Actually, fun fact: this <laughs> coffee mug was on the set. Uh, I'm just making that up. <laughs> oh, it was actually was. It was on our set. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. It was on the set. It was on the, the set. set. Whoa. For for me, for my one word impression, I'm going to go even more basic than both of yours, and I'm going to use an ancient word. From the Basically. times of Camelot and no, uh, magic, magic, because <laughs> it works in two ways. It works in two ways. There was a lot of magic in the movie, and it I felt the magic of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It was good though. It was a. It was again. I said it at the top, like it was the most fun I've had at the the movies this year. I think the only other true realistic competitor to how much fun I had at this film will be Transformers, the the Beast Wars yeah. movie. Because again, I'm going in that with literally no expectation. I just want to see big giant robots blow shit up. And you can distinguish them now a little bit better. They look yes. like they're they look like they did when I was growing up. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm so excited for that one. And, so high expectations. And not, and not just like <laughs> Oh, no. CGI silver cluster fuck. clusters. Yeah. <laughs> that movie I'm very excited for, but like this movie again, it was just it was it was it was really good because also like yes there was comedy, yes it was hilarious, but there was also like actual moments in the film where you're like, I'm not crying. I'm not gonna tear up over this shit. There was like yeah. really cool stuff too that they did, like the one shot that they do early in the yeah. movie. Yeah. That like like really snapped me to attention. Not that I wasn't paying attention before, but I was like, <laughs> "Wait, Whoa. what? What was the one shot?" There was. I mean, it wasn't a it probably wasn't a real one shot, but when um, with Doric, her, with Doric, when, when uh, she infiltrates, shape. when she yeah. infiltrates the uh, castle, and then she keeps wild shaping. Oh, uh, that was all one. Yeah, it was presented. Oh, you missed it? I did. Yeah, I, came no! back, I came back at you like a deer it. skittering oh, through. Yeah. Like, yeah. I left right before she went in and oh, then I came yeah. back as she oh, was a no. deer skittering under the gate. It's, oh, boy. It's a really oh. cool, it's a really cool I gotta go see shot. it again. Uh, yeah. I mean, we did say we're like, I want, I want to see, want it. To I'll, see I'll it. I'll go. Again. Yeah, I'll I mean, go. spoilers. For hey, the rest fuck of this the pod. pod. Let's just go see it right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm right. down. I, I, honestly, you know, having if said if that, you ended uh, the pod like that. It's all you need to know. I, I stopped to, recording. I have to say, it wasn't good though. <laughs> Wait, what? No, we asked, was it good at the end of the pod, not randomly, so we could go. Hurry. But yeah, I mean, I, I thought, I, I mean, but that that type of stuff, like, yeah, it felt like there was a little bit of everything again. Well, not only that though, even how the whole story starts, like we have, you know, our two, our 
you know, Chris Pine is, you know, probably our lead, you know, is uh, Edgin. Edgin and then Holga. They're obviously in jail and they're explaining how they got here. And what's interesting, like the, the four of us, we have played D and D a bunch in various campaigns throughout the years. And in D and D, right. There is this kind of, who are you? Tell me your quick origin story. And what <laughs> yeah. was interesting is like how they did that in the film to kind of catch you caught up. It felt very, very like D and D, um, which was really cool. And I'll, I'll say something now, even crazier. I think I told Lerman this, like the movie made me excited again to like D &D. play D and D, mm, which wow. I Same. think is like, I mean, that's the, probably the biggest yeah, like thing like it that. The, the film needs to accomplish that, you know, it needs to get players back in. It needs to attract new players. Cause you know, it's the only way to combat the fact that, um, it's Hasbro, right? That owns D and D now. Yep. I believe so, yeah. It's the only way to stop them from right, you know, rising those costs. <laughs> I thought it was <laughs> interesting because <laughs> Wizards of the Coast is the most synonymous name I know. Like especially right. during this OGA or whatever thing was happening. But the movie says Hasbro's mm. the Dungeons and Dragons That's in true. the credits, and I thought that was kind of interesting because it's always Wizards of the Coast. But Hasbro owns Wizards. Interesting. I don't know. Maybe it's not that interesting. I think. I think. Tell probably, us in the comments how interesting that was. Good point. Uh, I do wonder. I'm sure we'll see the the pieces and the stats of like the rise in popularity in D and D over the coming weeks, based off of this movie. Will be kind of fascinating to see. Well, I'm sure it'll be similar to like what happened with uh, Stranger Things. Yeah. So yeah. Stranger Things rise like, in D &D. You know, kicked it a little bit um, to get it going again. So, do you yeah. think this movie exists without D and D? Or I'm sorry, without Stranger <laughs> Things? Obviously, obviously, this movie does not exist without D and D. Can we just pause for a minute? What did you just say? I meant, does I this know, movie? Ex does, do you guys think this movie exists if Stranger Things doesn't come out? Yes, a few years ago because we have to go back to like Paramount and Hasbro's relationship. Yeah, and it's a very deep relationship. Oh, right? is like, it? Oh yeah, I mean like Transformers, oh, Paramount, oh, Hasbro. Like I they've see. been doing like. Somebody, I don't know who, and I'm sure we could nail it down to a couple of people, but somebody a while ago made the logical idea of, like, let's take a bunch of toys yeah. that we turn into TV shows and, and other things, and now let's make big-budget blockbusters because those individuals who used to watch those shows, play with those toys... They have money They now. have money now. <laughs> yeah. They have money. <laughs> let's uh, give them maybe what they want. I'm not sure. I mean, yeah. They also, like, won't... You know, if if someone's an adult and they're making like a D and D movie and they never played D and D, right? Mm -hmm. Um, there isn't that same level of like care and love. And I believe the creators of this movie, um, are big D and D players, right? As well, so you can you can tell, right? That's not like, you know, sometimes when you get an adaptation, there's like mocking or there's like a lack of understanding. Sometimes J J Abrams. JJ, wow. wow, he's you know claims <laughs> wow. to be a big fan of Star Wars and Star Trek, just not in I the way we are. I just said, <laughs> yeah. I said what he I said. Claims <laughs> it. <laughs> I said what I said. Uh, he's not but, a true uh, fan, but but sometimes right, sometimes it falls through the cracks, and like not, it's smart when the kids who grew up with it can make a, an adaptation um, that's strong. Even like we were at WonderCon last weekend, and. SpongeBob is now in its 20th plus year. Right. And some of the writers and the creators now, some of the writers on the show grew up with the show. Right. And the writing, therefore, has improved because they understand the original you oh, know, wow. ethos of the show. And so, like, it's funny how things can be cyclical that way. It's gone full circle. So it's yeah. gone back to, like, that classic yep. old school stuff. Yeah. Some of, some of the stuff is like, oh, I'm like, there was like an episode I watched that was from a few months ago. I was like, this is more like classic SpongeBob. This, this is more of the little, like, quick humor, slapstick, a little bit of humor for everybody versus just, like, the dumb humor it kind of turned into. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, it's turn and burn, right, at one point? Yeah. yeah. Our, so our, our one-word impression sentence is hilarious, magic, classic. I mean, that sweet. sounds pretty good. That sounds like yeah. a like a 1999 like review. <laughs> <laughs> sounds Pre like yeah, like hilarious, a nice trailer. Magic Cree White just not a, <laughs> not a review for the night in 2000 D and D movie. <laughs> oh, if anybody's seen oh, that, no, I don't think anybody has. I have it. No. It was oh. it was awful, awful. Now, as <laughs> as always, uh, Arjuna likes to go back in time and. Revive DVD chapter listings. <laughs> Speaking of 2000s. <laughs> and the 90s and the... Yeah, 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 90s. 90s is when DVDs came around. Um, Christian is going to read this. And Christian is going to read it in the voice of the Red Wizard guy who was behind it the whole time. 
Saz Tan. Saz <laughs> I like the whisper. Sazdam. Just a creep, like just a creepy creep creeper. Just be a creepy creeper Version creep. Five. Okay, Let's hear it. ready? Yep. All right, Junior's DVD chapter listing for Dungeons and Dragons: Honor Among Thieves. <clears throat> Oceans Five. <laughs> Freebird. The Prime Minister will see you now. Avengers, assemble. Street Rat, one shot. Rocket's retirement. Dead Man Tells All the Tales. Bridgerton Guide, ten minute cameo. Must roll higher. Another happy heist. Roll initiative. In the end, they did revive her mom. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Zaz Tam awaits, i.e. me. <laughs> that was pretty and, good. Yeah, wow. That was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the end, when they did revive her mom, I'm like, I can't believe I feel emotions at this. Well, Because right. it was such a happy movie. It's like now her I'm first sad. mom wasn't revived, but Holga was her real No, mom. the real oh, I mean, mom. It was yeah. such a cliche yeah. that like shouldn't yeah. have been at all impactful and but yet, it was and yet i teared up <laughs> i was like <laughs> yeah right next to ravi and i was like don't let him see don't let him see <laughs> yeah don't I look at be me cool. I don't look be cool. well like, wait, so funny thing so even though like so originally like when we were to see this movie there was i think um in our party <laughs> there was <laughs> party. five of us in our party to yes. start and just like a real and then by the mid- middle of the day the party went down to three and then by the time we saw the movie the party was just down to two me and oh, wow. and then even though we had all the seats, me and Lamer still moved all the way to the end. <laughs> so we were sent in. Fuck yeah. So I ended still up sitting next to somebody, but like thankfully oh. they were they were chill, like they weren't on their phone or anything. But it was still another similar thing was like, I don't want to let these random strangers see me tear up. <laughs> I sat all the way I sat in the fourth row. Oh nice. Uh, and so there was no one in front of me or to the sides. Everyone there's only like five other people in the theater and they were all behind me. So but even though no one could see me. I was still like, hold it in, hold it in. <laughs> hold! I'm a, man. Oh. I'm a man. I'm a grown ass man. Speaking of a grown ass man, Bradley can Cooper's cry. cameo. <laughs> Not as a grown ass man, but as a halfling. That uh, Wait. very, very, that was the biggest surprise to me. I He's did not a halfling, know. right? No, you just implied that halflings can't be grown ass men. Well, I, I meant, I meant <laughs> like you, your character in our campaign is a halfling. I meant, I meant a like halfling full man. height. I meant full height, not like oh. the man. You know, like being a man. Not yeah, the song. Being so, a are man. you saying height has to do with how manly you can no, be? No, but I, I, I thought Ravi was making the joke of grown ass no, man because he was. I meant more like the fact that the Bradley Cooper is man. not three feet. He is. Taller, I, yes. I believe. Uh, I don't know how tall he is. That was a hilarious cameo. I had no idea he was in the movie. So when he showed up as Holger's ex-husband, uh, Halfling, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, the Holger's, so good. into Halfling. Holger's whole entire story is fascinating just yeah. because she left her people, right, in order to be with him. Yep. And then they unfortunately ended up breaking up because, yep. because of the fact that she would, was, he said, spend hours crying or being upset because she abandoned her people, people for him. Yeah. yeah. Which is again, it's a very real yeah. thing in like in, in, in modern society that unfortunately happens. And, and then she's flirting with another halfling at the yeah. end. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but the, but, but, type, but Bradley Cooper type. has a thing for like, you know, big you know strong really yeah warriors, strong. yeah. Everyone's got their thing. Yeah. But again, it visually though, the, it was really, really also was well fun. done. And again, I'm glad that was hidden and like you had no idea that was coming it was hidden it was a short scene it wasn't like you know it was pivotal like it gives her the stick which turns out to be um the magical staff that hither, uh, hither. yeah that um what's his name that uh simon, simon. uses later mm-hmm. uh but it wasn't like you know how some movies would like go back to it or you know make it a longer thing or, or whatever it felt it just felt like well balanced good little funny cameo yeah fun more, more about Hulk. How do you guys feel the Hobbit? The well, not the Hobbit, but the halfling effects were compared to like Lord of the Rings. I mean, it's not as polished, which makes me think that this was added very like towards the end of everything. Yeah. Which again, it's it's fine. It, it did what it needed to do. They also probably didn't. I have- thought it was. I thought it had added like the the lack of polish almost added to the comedic effect of it. Yeah. So like the you know. 
you know, Bradley Cooper clearly is, his head looks a little too big for his body. And, you know, so I thought it worked. It worked for the tone of the movie. Yeah. And especially because it was a cameo, Bradley Cooper probably didn't have like a ton of time right. to shoot. So they had to do it pretty quick. It was in a day. It was a day shoot, let's be honest. I mean, again, speaking of range, like Bradley Cooper, you know, <laughs> he he plays he plays this halfling. He's playing a halfling. He plays like crazy action star. He plays like a frat dude, like the hangover. He plays Rocket. Uh I was going to say kangaroo, but no, yep. that's a raccoon. Okay, yeah. Rocket kangaroo. kangaroo. Rocket kangaroo. He could probably play a kangaroo. He Rocky totally Bullwinkle. I was Captain trying to look this kangaroo. up. Is Bradley Cooper like a famous D&D fan or player? Not that I know of. Uh, yeah, 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 not that I've heard of. Just, no. I mean, maybe. Yeah. Could be. I wasn't yeah, sure. he could be. I'm a lot really. of Hollywood is. Because if, 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 like. if I was thinking of cameos, I thought they might do like Vin Diesel, because I know he's a pretty big player. d and Or like oh, uh, he could Joseph, what's his name, Mangello. Uh, yeah. Death, yeah, Destro. Yeah, he's like he's another famous he's huge. one. Yeah, um, any of he the runs cast the of... biggest. He runs the biggest like Hollywood, like underground Hollywood D and D. I watched a forty-five minute YouTube video on these guys building him his D and D table. I saw, and that. I watched the entire fucking thing. I can't. I was like lying in bed in the morning, scrolling through YouTube. I saw that video. I'm like, oh, let me watch like five minutes of this. I watched all forty-five minutes of them building this table and then delivering it to his house in Hollywood. So what's his address? <laughs> I don't know. They were good after, about not revealing. After that. watching this movie, I think we should uh, form a, a thieves group and we should steal <laughs> D&D tables. I'm um, in. Killed. In. So uh, we're not doing it for real. Wink. Wink. <laughs> wink. <laughs> wink. <laughs> wink. All right. Let's talk yeah. about everyone's favorite uh, subject of a film, and that is the bad people. The Red Wizards. Mm. I have a couple of questions. Oh. What is the Red Wizard? <laughs> <laughs> well, you see the red. Bald, yeah. and they have magical powers. Also, how stupid are the people of this world? Like the um, the 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 main antagonist, the the female red wizard, who's Sophina. Sophina. How did the people not know she was a red? Let's wizard? just say they didn't roll very high perception checks. Got it. Okay. Also, like master of disguises, you know, she wasn't. She didn't walk around in her red robes. Yeah, it was like yeah. what? what was brown or gray or blue. it was like yeah, it was blue. blue. Charcoal. The opposite. The opposite. Of red. There you go. So we're like, she's totally fine. She's a blue wizard. Well, she had that <laughs> little cap on. Yeah, she had a little hat. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I uh, mean, yeah. the protagonists were fooled, right? They did the, they did, they stole the 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 thing for her. I feel like so, yeah. in this world, the people are rather stupid. <laughs> and, and just because NPCs are run by like one dude who has right. to like do yeah. them all. Uh, usually in a campaign, and they have to be oblivious to things that would be obvious to right. players because the players have to be the smart ones. I, I did find that funny the the strategy to like have the gold like all shot on the streets so oh, that everyone yeah. would just leave because like again, kind of playing into the D and D ness of it all. That was like I think of like some of my favorite times of doing D and D, and it's always the like outside the box type mm-hmm. of yeah. thinking that's a little weird, you know. Um, and, and they fun, did that right in the first scene, right? When yeah. um, Edgin latches on to the uh, Jonathan, the <laughs> yeah. friend. Oh, the bird. <laughs> the free bird. Yeah. To, to escape. I mean, yeah. that's such like a D&D, like, we've got to come up with a way to escape in the moment. Oh, let's, let's, you know, that's our plan. That, that was <laughs> so hilarious ridiculous. that, like, he did all that, and then they're like, we... We're yeah, 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 yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah. Like he actually had a compelling enough case. story. Probably rolled like a nat twenty in yeah. like his persuasion, and it's like I had this other plan. Yeah, this, <laughs> yeah, yeah I got this plan. Yeah. I need Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> also, I love I love how so um, Edgin is a bard, right? And bards, uh, one of their features is giving inspiration. And the whole movie, he's trying to inspire Simon mm-hmm. to be the sorcerer that he's capable of. So I thought that was such like a clever way of showing like the bard, the bardic inspiration. It's just him in his ear the whole time. You can do this, <laughs> and he must be just rolling so poorly not to be able to inspire him, <laughs> like failing the whole movie. <laughs> I did think it was interesting that Pine didn't have any magic. That, or at least yeah, visible magic. Like normally, a bard will have some form of magic, but I guess, like you said, it's it was shown more in the magic of his words. Yeah, yeah. words are powerful. His words things. and his wit. Yeah, and as we wit. know, as podcast people, podcasters, the power of the word. They probably wanted to balance their team out a little bit too, because you have uh, Simon and you had um, uh, Dory, Doric, um, who were both heavy magic users and then they probably wanted um 
at Ganon Holga to be non magic users. So right. Because it's otherwise, it's just magic on magic, and then it gets yeah. A then it's boring. three to three to one. Yeah. Instead of two to two, and then um, uh, Reggae's character. How do you say his name? Zenk. Yep. Zenk. Zenk. Yeah. It was you know only in the movie for a couple scenes, right? right. He wasn't like a he a had huge a side part quest to go do. He uh, was <laughs> definitely an NPC. I I did love him walking away. <laughs> oh, yeah, over the rock. Over the yeah. rock. Then, I think he might be my favorite part of the movie. It was so Just good. As soon as he as soon, from the entire time he was on screen, I think I was laughing. I had yeah. a I had a friend point out that like they felt like Zank's inclusion was like that one friend who comes in and plays one session mm-hmm. of a D and D and then has yeah. to go and, and like, yeah. that's all they can play. Yeah. And they're so like, over exactly. the top, it's so like, great, just so over the yeah. top. He like so comes great. in and is like, I am the protagonist now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've like never someone had a who paladin. made that character we've and like, I want to be perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much. <laughs> so it's a paladin. I don't have any flaws, and I am perfect. amazing, <laughs> and I must go now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, but in terms of the Red Wizards and this main bad guy, and I guess this also kind of pushes into what's to come next. Yeah. Um, Red Wizards are obviously a big piece of D and D lore in terms of, I guess for you, for you, for you nerds. Um, <laughs> Are they the main big bad, or are they just one aspect of a big bad? I think there's multiple big bads. It depends on <laughs> depends what, on your campaign, what campaign you're doing, and and what you're pulling from. But I think at least for the franchise that they're making right now, that it seems to be that the Red Wizards are this big threat threat of whatever they're kind of doing with these movies and any supplemental kind of. Um, uh, I'll say, uh, you know, to give a little context here, uh, me and Arjuna are involved in a campaign being run by our producer, Michael. And we've had a uh, recent run-in with uh, some Red Wizards, and know, they murdered us. They TPK'd us. Wait, our character's dead? Our character's are dead. Are our dead, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Your character yeah. died, too. Pedro? <laughs> yeah, Pedro's yep. dead. Yeah, dead. Pedro's gone. He's a goner. <laughs> so mean, if the back... Red Wizards are fucking uber powerful, at least uh, at level five. Wait, could, could you play a D&D campaign and be a Red Wizard? Yes, yeah, you could. I Actually, want to. Yeah, why not? You could be anything. They well, like what the paladin was. They have uh, right. at least in fourth edition. I read because that's what. I, anyway, nerding out. Uh, <laughs> there is the like same thing as the paladin, where like you used to be a part of they, and now you're not. Type of thing. I don't think you could. I mean, unless your DM wanted to allow evil characters in the party. You wouldn't necessarily get to play a full-on red wizard. Gotcha. But can you be a green wizard? You can be whatever you want. It's imaginary. So do we? <laughs> is there any official word in terms of what is to come next, or is it really dependent on what this movie does think, box office-wise? I, I think obviously they're going to wait until yeah the movie's numbers have settled in terms of what, how it's doing and everything. But uh, I do believe Paramount is interested in making this a big franchise. I've seen some reports that they're working on a series of some type for Paramount Plus Ooh. that will be related to the movie within the same world that they've built, not necessarily the same characters. Um, and then I'm sure, again, like if this movie blows it out of the water. There's definitely, they definitely set up for a sequel, right? You know, Zaztam yeah. is, is out there. There's obviously more red wizards. Sofina is just one of many red wizards. So, you know, I guess they could, they could do a bunch of sequels if they really wanted to. Yeah. Um, well, they showed the intellect devourers, which are mind flayer yep. minions. So they've kind of, those are another classic big bad along with the wizards of Thay. Yeah. So. And I there's dragons. Them. Yes. We actually got a dungeon and a dragon. We got three <laughs> dragons, I believe. I only counted that one fat one. Uh, well, you had the, <laughs> he, he was the size of three. <laughs> you had you had, the, you had the, the big one, right? You had the one in the flashback of the battle with the dead guys, which was hilarious, by the way. They're like, "Oh yes," and then I was told to do this, and then oh, the right. I died. Oh, and then, and then I, I died. died. <laughs> that entire scene was great. Oh yeah, it was such uh, a with great the use. five questions, and then too. the after credit scene too. I knew that was going to be the after credit yeah. scene. Like they left this guy alive for the after credit scene, right? Um, yeah, there's that dragon. There's that dragon in the flashback. And then I guess technically in the final battle. Oh, the rock Sophia, dragon? The, yeah, the rock dragon. Yeah. I wonder what kind of dragon that was. A rock dragon. <laughs> well, yeah. was it rock or was it a different type of material? Well, because the one in the Marble. flashback was a black <laughs> dragon, which breathes acid, or yep. breathes acid, spits acid. And then the big one was the red dragon, which is yeah. fire. Yeah. And then the the other one didn't seem to have... 
Did it do fire or what did it do? I can't remember what it did. It kind of looked like a gold dragon, but typically those are good. Yeah. So I don't think it could have been. Did it breathe like green f- fire of some type or? I I can't believe I don't remember. Yeah, I'm not sure. It Wait, did, the it, dragon it, at the it, end it shot in like, the final battle? Yeah, yeah, it shot like green stuff out of it. Wait, what was, I thought that was like a transmuted. Like I thought like. Sophina like turned something into yeah, it was like a statue yeah. into it. Yeah, so it's not re- it's not really a dragon then, right? It's more of a a summon or a transmutation type of a thing. No, I think transmutation is right, but I think it still so it's counts not. as a dragon. I don't know. That's if a it good looks question. like a dragon, sounds like a yeah. dragon. Is it a dragon? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. This is like the chicken or the egg, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's exactly like that. It's exactly, it's exactly like that. I can't see any news for a sequel, uh, right. but Rotten Tomatoes has it like up at ninety three percent. All red tomatoes except for the Wall Street Journal gave it like a a, a splatty tomato and was definitely very just like the m- yeah out of the crowd. Uh, it. It, can you read like what's the initial like top of top consensus? Yeah, what's there like Wall Street? I want to know what oh, Wall Street said. So about Wall it. Street Journal said it's a blizzard of rubbish lurching from one barely explained magical gizmo or beast to another so Jesus. quickly that none of it has any impact whatsoever. The dude's picture explains it all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh wow! Yeah, I think the critic score is ninety one percent. Audience is ninety three. Uh, the box office so far is seventy one and a half million total. Um, thirty eight point five domestic, thirty three worldwide. Did they get a uh, a China release? Do we know? I'm not sure. I know it's opened so far in like eighty percent of the markets, yeah. so it has like another twenty percent to open to. Um, and these are projections still only with uh Saturday. Um, How here's a random question: How come we've never gone to a D and D convention? Like we've done so many different types we of We have. Things. We have? Well, Which? okay, we haven't. We WonderCon is as close as I would say we've gotten, but there is Gen Con, I think. Is that what it's called? Probably. Anybody want to I could look it up. I I'm, just, mind I'm too one. intimidated. I just feel like the people there are so more advanced. I just feel like a fraud. I'd go for it. Oh, day. imposter syndrome. Yeah, I'd be like, "Oh man, I'm not a real deal." I would have that. I would have that too. <laughs> I'm like, I'm stupid. <laughs> I don't, I don't know think if that's, that's a true. valid concern, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm always concerned about that. you. I think Being you fit perfectly <laughs> in with a bunch of D&D players. <laughs> you have all the gear. You've got the pants, the T-shirt, the socks, and mm. now a popcorn tin. I have my popcorn tin. Can I come in? <laughs> <laughs> Much like Hugh Grant on the red carpet. Can you explain what you're wearing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my I God. I don't know. My made it. <laughs> speaking, speaking of, like, you obviously, <laughs> we don't know... If precisely what's coming everything is rumor speculation but if you have to give a bold prediction of what happens next uh, it could be a movie it could be a tv Ooh. series it could be the political nature of hasbro and paramount's relationship over this property it could be a discussion around the players and D. what do you think is going to happen next you know it's a really good question because it's kind of a unique, and Juno kind of uh, alluded to this off the top. It is kind of a unique situation, right? We got a movie with a huge IP, but it's like the gaming community, the role, tabletop role playing community. And, you know, we can see different sort of things starting to branch out. Like, it's not exactly D&D, but we have like Vox Machina on Amazon. Amazon. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and then as as our producer kind of alluded to earlier, uh, the whole OGL thing um, really soured a lot of people's uh, view on Dungeons and Dragons and Wizards of the Coast and, and Hasbro and all that. So it does feel like a very much wait and see right now. So predictions would be tough, but I, if I had to guess, if I had to make one, I think you do. I think we're we're gonna get we're definitely gonna get a sequel. Or seven. I think this is going to be the next big franchise, uh, and I hope they don't beat it to death like they've done oh, with other will. IPs. But we'll see. In ten years, where Dungeons and Dragons, the movie fifteen or whatever, will be like cool. Uh, we, we feel a uh, IP the, fatigue. Yeah. And the other thing as well is that Dungeons and Dragons has, much like all of our other big IPs, has a very you know has a multiverse. There's many different 
things that don't intersect. So like they could come out with the Dragonlance movie, which is like separate from this adventure that we saw, right? This takes place in Faerun. Um, Dragonlance is a whole different world inspired by Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. I mean, there's Pathfinder, there's all other kinds of like different things. And so the challenge that they are going to have, I think, is not to confuse casual viewers. And maybe that's just as easy as just brand it differently. So if they come out with a Dragonlance, that's just Dragonlance. Don't put D&D in the title at all. Oh, they will. They have to. They, they want to keep it. They want to keep the IP. Yeah. But yeah. It's going to get real but, but messy. But I will say they, now, uh, now that Christian has said that there's a multiverse, um, Huge. D&D uh, multiverse movie incoming same year as Secret Wars. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, that's your bold prediction, or you're saying that's, no? Because oh. you know a lot of the studios are like similar storytelling. We'll right. try and like Mimic. one up each other and yeah. like try and come out with the same thing in the same year. Um, so that would is Secret War still fine. coming out based on some? I, I think it is. I would assume so. I thought it was one of <laughs> the only ones. They'll find a way that's still coming out. Uh, I think it's also interesting to Krishna's point too is that D and D steals a lot of ideas from other like. I don't know if steals the right word, but right like how much Ballrows. of their how much of their game universe can they actually put in a movie because it also belongs to uh you know Tolkien or yeah. you know like they they take a lot from everywhere. It's true. So true. Uh, but that's a, that's true I think though of everything now. Yeah, but like straight up just like all right, this religion is D&D now. Or like there's a I don't know. I I I I'm being a little maybe extreme with it, but it I mean, seem... you also have to look at it this way, too, where when it comes to, like, movie rights and things, the studios are all very much in bed with each other. So it's just paying off the right people. Yeah, I think yeah, they could do point. it. It just yeah. depends on how many people. You know, like how some movies don't ever make it to Blu-ray because mm-hmm. of how complicated the rights are. I feel like yeah. D&D is one of those situations where the right situation has got to be so complicated for a movie over I, I, a game. Yeah, and ju- and to back up what Lerman is saying, like one of the most beloved D and D characters, Dritz Doerden, who's like a dark elf, right? That's created and written by uh, an author, R. A. Salvatore. So, wh- wh- yeah, who? How does how does that work? Is that as simple as as are that character now? Be- you know, belongs to. I mean, yeah, it's is that it's like because the books. There's a whole bunch of D and D books. Do studios have rights to that? Probably not. I don't think Hasbro has rights to those books either, though. Yeah, right? I don't know. It de- yeah, it depends on how the deal's set up. <laughs> so, right. Of, like, the, the get IP real and the franchise of it all and what is canonical and what is... If only, if only we, we knew a lawyer in the entertainment space. Oh. Yeah, it's too bad we don't. Yeah, we could ask them and be do. like, could you explain this to us? Thanks. Please explain. Yeah, please don't do your job. Just uh, look at the uh, <laughs> D&D Hasbro Paramount contract and let us know how it all works because... We'd yeah. like to know for, I don't for know For our why. bold predictions. Yeah, for our bold <laughs> predictions. <laughs> I used to know a lawyer in that space. I don't think I do anymore. Uh, Juno, uh, what is your bold prediction for this future franchise? My bold prediction is they are go- we're going to get the Paramount Plus series first. Okay. And it will be our favorite show of that year. Wow. That's... I mean, it's pretty bold prediction. That's bold. Pretty bold. I, yeah. I, was, I was thinking of going negative here of like, oh, yeah, they're going to franchise the shit out of this and we're going to hate it. I mean, it's like kind of what Christian years. said. <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, Christian said it. And I was like, you know what? I'm well, it depends. I want to be positive. I want to like, maybe this will be good. And maybe, I don't know who the creators will be behind it, but maybe if they take their time with it like they did with the movie, it could be something really special. That's, that's a pretty good one. Yep. That's good. Just hoping I roll a nat 20 here. <laughs> you should have rolled it then. Yeah, roll. Oh, yeah, let's roll see it. what. Yeah, see what you get. Ten. Ten. That wow. was, okay. That was not a roll. <laughs> that was a yeah, that I just was didn't want to break it. Yeah, he Spend just throws it. Turn. Fucking thing shatters. <laughs> uh, so for me, my bold prediction is actually going to be more specific to the cast, and nice. that is, I think, um, I think, I think Chris Pine, Michelle Rodriguez. Mm. And Daisy Head, who's Sophina, I don't think we ever see them 
in a D&D movie ever again. What? Well, yep. wow. Daisy Head makes sense because, you know, she died. She didn't die. She just had some rocks falling. You're right. She's unconscious. She, yeah, unconscious. Yeah. Roland, somebody will heal her. She is literally a lich. Oh, I guess that's true. Yeah, so she can't die. Wow, I mean, look like that's was. rude. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I do believe, um, I think, yeah, I think Michelle Rodriguez, again, these are bold predictions. I don't know these people. I don't know what they're thinking. So, you know, don't don't come for me. But what? I think, like, somebody like Michelle Rodriguez, who, who she's part of a, another massive franchise. That's coming to an end. That's coming to an end. A new one. But I think it's also possible, like, you know, people may just be like, I want to take a break from these franchise things and do smaller but it pays the bills. True. It does pay the bills. But I think also with Chris Pine, I don't know if he's, like, especially from all the red carpet things that I've seen of him, all the interviews I've seen of him around this movie, I just don't know if he's as into it as, like, the others. It, Interesting. I get the sense that it's, like, and this could just be because anyone that has to, like, spend weeks on end marketing a thing, yeah. you eventually get tired of being asked the same questions. I completely understand that. But, like, I, I get the sense that he's, it's just, like, Okay. One and done. Yeah. One and done. I think that would be tough because I I don't know if the movie works without those two. Like I don't I know. That's that a bold prediction. Yeah. Well, I was gonna ask, uh, Ravi, would yeah. you be interested in movies if those if at least the first two weren't included? If they keep the same style and kind of the same kind of storytelling that they're doing currently, um, I think it works. I think they've done a really good job kind of setting the stage of like this is your world. This is how we're going to present the world. So I don't think the characters have to be a thousand percent part of it. And I also don't want it to be that way because, again, isn't the beauty of D&D it's an ever-changing story. It can yeah. be whatever you want it to be. If all of a sudden you're locked into, like, this core group of characters, then to me it's not D&D anymore. Then it's just we're following these five, six individuals and cool. Then it's just another but counterpoint to Star that. Wars. But counterpoint to that in yeah. D&D, because you play these characters and you you get locked in right. with the group that you're with, you form a very tight connection to it. Like Even like the campaign Christian and Michael and I are playing, that's a campaign that really started multiple years ago, right? And right. Like, we've been playing these, say, you know, I specifically have been playing the same character for multiple years and there's like a real attachment there. And right. like I think with Movie sequels, like, that's why you want the same characters to come back because you get attached to these characters, too. And I think, like, a big portion of why that movie really works is because, like, you really like these characters. And you really, like, you, that's why you feel the emotion at the end. Right. When, like, Holga is dying because you're like, oh, fuck, like, she's going to die. Yeah. Right? Um, I just don't know. So if, I, I, yeah, I just don't yeah. know, though, if that is going to be the thing that sets this away. Like, you both have said, like, you don't want them to beat this franchise sure. to death. I think if you keep making movies around these central characters, yeah. you're going to beat it to death. I don't think you have quick. to forever, but I think, yeah. like, your next sequel should definitely have them. Because I think if you don't, you risk kind of alienating the audience that you've already made. But, I mean, specifically with those casual, characters. Maybe the more casuals. Right, but the other... Casuals. Cash. Cast that they had... I think those characters are interesting enough. And, like, I want to know more about, like, the paladin. Like, I want to know more about him and his whole thing and walking over rocks. Why does he do that? That's not normal behavior. <laughs> What's Jarnathan, like, feeling? Jarnathan. <laughs> Poor Jarnathan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jarnathan. The what real if MVP. If the, if the Paramount show is just about Jarnathan, that'll be the best show. Oh, probably the last yeah. 10 years. <clears throat> Jarnathan, this escape era, Kokra. Oh. Uh, uh, I will say uh, Chris Pine, I think, is the only one of the group that has uh, spoken out and said anything positive about the game of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I know Hugh Grant was like, I don't know, I don't play it. Right. Uh, but he's, I think he was quoted as saying it should be played in schools and like a proponent of it. So he, nice. he might be back for it. Yeah. But I could also see. Does, well, is he, is but, he going uh, against Michelle the Michelle Tyre. Rodriguez is a big D and D player as well. Oh, yeah, shit. no, she played. Maybe so. she just was trying to hide her nerd. Nerd. She, she was. Yeah, it came out in a couple of interviews, but, and she was definitely like very reserved in all of them. And but when but when they got her to like open up about it, she's like, yeah, she she plays. She has played quite a bit. Uh, and then Renee, uh, what's his name? Oh, Reggae, Reggae Jean yeah. Page. Yeah, he he he's played a bit as well. Oh, interesting. Bridgerton, man. That's a very yeah. bold statement from Chris Pine with we should put D&D in school. Oh, especially because, you know, right. in the 80s, right? Michael can speak to this. Yeah, D&D was considered, considered demonic. Satanic, satanic. satanic. Uh, yeah. Apparently, those groups are out again. 
Uh, yeah. The movie by oh. certain groups has been billed as satanic. I mean, don't go to the south cow. right now. Which is so stupid. Like, have they seen? Have they seen like any of the Marvel or DC stuff that's out there? Like, Plus, I mean, Doctor God. Strange. <laughs> You're Wait. fighting evil. Isn't that good? Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Well, I mean, I guess maybe the 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 fear from like a, a parental view is a child will play this and be like, oh, I want to be a red wizard and conjure up evil. They always but who would want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if oh you come God. back, you can play one. That's a good selling point. I want to be the main one. April You 11th. will be, and it'll be just like the movie. W- wait, then I lose. No, no, no. I meant like it'll be as fun oh, and gotcha, gotcha. quick. And, and your, pay- your death will be painless. No. <laughs> your suffering anyone- will be easy. I have a question. Does anyone have like a... Let's say like three or four or five um, actor cat like dream cast to play like a party in a D and D movie. Oh, I ever thought about this already? Um, Ooh, here nice. we go, ready to go. Idris Alba. Oh, he nice. was gonna be on my list too. <laughs> uh, yeah, Idris Alba. Like Al- Idris Alba. Oh, what would he be? Um, probably I- I'd like to see him as naturally like the strong man of the group. I think, or. Like a fighter or a barbarian. Or either yeah, that like or make him the, the, the comic, the, the the comedic aspect is like a halfling. I think that would also be kind of fun. <laughs> a, a halfling fighter. No, make him a dwarf. <laughs> or or <laughs> a dwarf. Or dwarf. Or, but, so but, but here's the other thing, though. Like, make him a dwarf or, or a halfling, but he's also a bard. Because remember, yeah. Idris Alba does music as well. Oh, a DJ oh. bard. Yeah, like a DJ. Yeah, I think that would be like DJ ridiculously <laughs> funny. That would um, be hilarious. I, 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 this one is kind of mean, but uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, yes. And she would just be kind of the clueless type of character, just kind of wandering around. And <laughs> she she would be the one that, you know, the, uh, the bard needs to inspire. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ian McKellen as a wizard. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Let's go original. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Uh, Viggo Mortensen as <laughs> a ranger. <laughs> ranger slash fight. Oh my all right, all right, all right. John Reese Davis as a dwarf. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> oh. Uh, I don't know. Who did M. Night Shyamalan play? I want to see an M. Night Shyamalan D&D movie now. Don't. Oh, don't. He, he's, not allowed, he's not allowed to touch franchises. <laughs> yeah, he should not touch IPs. Yeah. Uh, I'd like Hips. to see, and this is based off of The Green Knight, but like Dev Patel mm. potentially mm. Uh, in a role. But I maybe not as like a he was a knight, obviously in the Green Knight, or he's supposed to try and be a knight. But I want him to be like some type of like squirrely, like thief or or rogue type. Maybe a arcane trickster rogue. Yeah, I think he throw could, a little I, magic. I think around. he could. Pay, I think he could do that pretty well. Ooh, I'd like that. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Do you have any? You asked the question, Christian, but do you have any? Yeah, yeah. I, it's funny. I actually don't. <laughs> wow, wow, good job, so, buddy. Here's the challenge. I'm trying to stay away. I'm trying to stay away from the actors who are already in that stuff because it seems like that would be too easy. It would be like you just find a parallel role for them, you know, like a Robbie Downey Jr. or a Chris Hemsworth. Oh, like, yeah. No. I'm trying to stay away from that, but it's hard because a lot of big name actors are attached to franchises. I'd like so. to see Henry Cavill, maybe. I don't know. I guess that's uh, still the same. He did The Witcher. Never mind. Well, he's also oh, going to yeah. be doing Warhammer, and that's the table. I want the game. one guy that never does franchises. I want Leonardo DiCaprio in the most ridiculous cameo possible. He's an actor within D&D. No, Takes no. no his, his his role in um, uh, Walt, the uh, Wolf on Wall Street. Wolf Wall Street. I want that character yeah. in D&D. Oh, my God. So he's cocaine oh. out of his brain running around. He, would be, he could be like the, the head of the Thieves Guild or the Merchants Guild or something. <laughs> yeah, but he takes yeah. it way too serious. <laughs> Dungeons yeah, and Dragons yeah, yeah. is, the, fir- is the, like, the first franchise he ever let's does. Get, uh, let's get Daniel Day-Lewis in there. He, he would be a naturally yeah. a great bad guy, but if you're going to add him to a party, uh, he could be... I could see him as a wizard. You know, like a, a wizard who's like really mean to everyone and knows too much and yeah. No, better. No, he should up. be, the druids are the ones that can shapeshift. Yep. Yeah. yeah. He could be a druid because he's a method actor. So. <laughs> oh, that's so <laughs> You're going to be so an owl bear, so he'll spend like two weeks. I'm yeah, bear. yeah. <laughs> no, that's so funny. Like part of his character is like he finds animals and he acts like them to wild shape. I would, you better. know what? Fuck it. I don't want to see the movie. I just want to see the behind the scenes of Daniel Day Lewis <laughs> method acting as creatures. Oh, you know who I want? I want baby Matt Damon. <laughs> baby Matt Damon? What's yeah. baby Matt Damon? He's the he's the guy who's from uh, Breaking Bad. He plays Todd. He's also in that game. Jesse Plemons? Oh, yeah, Jesse, yeah, Jesse Plemons. Plemons. I want gotcha. him. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. He'd be great. 
Oh, well, then you know what? If we're going to do Breaking Bad, let's do uh, Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston would be, you know, I think a great artificer. All right, so you take that character, like an artificer's like build, you yeah. know, mm. they're kind of like his mechanic character in Drive. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and he's going to be Bowser, right? Uh, Jack Black. Oh, Jack Black. <laughs> oh, but is yeah. that a really bad comical necromancer? <laughs> he's really like, bad at like freezing the, the dead yeah but like he trips over himself <laughs> as he tries to do it and then the, de- the dead is like half formed or something I don't then know. you get get hugh laurie as a cleric so yeah. hugh laurie who did uh house you know he should come in and be a cleric clerics heal people would be kind of funny <laughs> <laughs> oh you've got you don't you don't have leg rot you've got I don't know. IBS. Uh, can't <laughs> deal with that. Oh my god. Oh, Rowan Atkinson. He should be someone in D and D. Yeah, black, like, you know, the black like a animal. weird like bureaucrat who's like a bumbling fool. No, no, I, no, an animal keeper. I could work too. I don't know if you saw him in that Netflix movie B. No. Oh, it's very, oh. it's it's really good um, uh, visual comedy. Yeah. Because it's him and a bee, basically, as his co-star, and it's a CGI bee. So okay. it's very, like, Mr. Bean type okay. kind of humor and everything. Um, definitely check it out. It's, like, it's super easy to watch. It's quick, but it's, like, it's very, very Rowan Atkins. No, I hadn't heard of that one, but I, it sounds funny. Okay, it's that time. And as always, because we don't want to anger our father, uh, Juna, you start us off. <laughs> okay. Uh, Krishna was the Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves movie good I don't think there's any surprise here yes it was very good <laughs> I was going like to say no <laughs> yeah no it no. Was, no. no it was super good um, it was definitely the most fun movie I've seen in a while uh, definitely this year. I didn't get to see Cocaine Bear, so I know I haven't seen all the fun movies. But yeah, super fun, really funny. Um, the the cast, the chemistry with the cast was phenomenal, and you know you could tell you know everyone bought into their roles, <laughs> if that makes sense. You know, everyone in the D and D party has a role, and I thought like the strongest part of this movie was perhaps like everyone playing their role to perfection. Uh, even even the curmudgeon um Hugh Grant. Uh, Hugh Grant, yeah. That's Forge, who's yeah, alive at the end. Forge. Maybe the sequel yeah. will be called Dungeons and Dragons, Revenge of Forge. Or, you know, the Dark Forge or something. You Forge know, is right. No, that's going to be the series. And, it's, and, and what they're going to do instead is they're just going to follow Hugh Grant around with a camera. <laughs> There's no way they get Hugh <laughs> like Grant to sign up style? for like 10 episodes. Oh, definitely not. No, no. <laughs> That'd be I don't funny. Get like why an the artificer, like an retire. artificer, builds like a camera recording system and follows Forge around as he tries to rebuild his wealth. It'd be hilarious. Uh, but yeah, it was awesome. Ravi, was Dungeons and Dragons: Honor Among Thieves good? Yes, massive surprise here um, for me because I, I did think the movie was gonna suck. <laughs> I think all of us were. Had yeah, some I kind of figured like I, I, I was. Think, I was. I was really out on the movie until uh, the last trailer. So I wasn't looking forward to it at all. And then something in that last trailer, I was like, "Oh my god!" Was the trailer voice guy the, that last trailer? Which one? They had the trailer voice guy for I think the final trailer, like the the old the the guy who used to do like He's the trailer dead. voices. Well, they had like an impersonator at least, or they did oh. like the trailer voice, which they don't do for a lot of trailers these days. Oh, it might have been. Yeah. It might have been. Because yeah. that was the last one I saw in theaters like a few, like a week before. Yes. Maybe. if it, Yeah, it's possible. Uh, but yeah. I, and again, I, I thought it, it was going to be more like a typical video game movie adaptation where it on <laughs> or in the trailer, it looks interesting, but then in execution is done poorly. But obviously they did a really good job. And like I said, most of I've had this year at a theater. Juno, thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Juno, was D and D honor among Chris Pine and his friend friends? Good friends, friends. Uh, it was not good. It was great. This is called was it good? Was so. it great? It was. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, uh, it was great. I mean, echo what you guys said. One of the one of the my favorite movies of the year, um, and just like a movie you keep thinking about, and like. And like all the fun that you had, and kind of what's next, and 
uh, similar to what you said, Ravi, where you're like, okay, well, it kicks me back into D and D, and like, yeah, like I really want to play like D and D right now. Just kind of like talking about it, you know, just like roll initiative. Is that because you're holding a D twenty? Right I think now? so. I think yeah, that probably is it. Too, the, there is one thing we've completely forgot to bring up, and I said, is, okay, so for you two, obviously you didn't see it with us, so your experiences might have been a little bit different, but. Before our movie started, this is oh, yeah. in AMC <laughs> theaters. Before the movie actually started, the cast is all sitting, looking at you, the audience, and they, they say the cast says to you, "We all play heroes in D anD D, but you guys are the real heroes, theater heroes, theater heroes, showing up and watching this movie in theaters." And I looked over to Lerman and I was like. I already hate this movie. He did. Wait, but then the movie was so good, I completely wait, forgot what? about that. I, that did not happen. Yeah, in my I don't yeah, know if this I was an AMC because sp- Chris, you saw it Regal. I saw it at Regal. We saw it at yeah. AMC, and I think this is what they were putting ahead of movies. But it was such a, it was gross. It was I like don't, a Christopher Nolan thing to say. Yeah, like I don't I'm need to see Nolan. that or be told Sacrifice that. Like yourself. It was a You're very a hero. Very to the movie. stupid <laughs> thing. Yeah. It was so weird and insulting. <laughs> it, it was yeah. like oh, the corporation almost? being like, way to be a good customer. Yeah. It yeah. was disgusting. Ugh, that so, is gross. And, I mean, again, I the cast may have, you know, had negative thoughts or didn't want to do it, but ultimately they had to do it. So I, I don't blame them or anything. I think this is definitely more a Paramount, maybe AMC thing. And I am going to look, I think, a little bit more into this. And if it is an AMC thing, I will probably cancel my AMC membership. Whoa. Wow. Oh. Because, like, oh. I'm tired of this, like, corporate, yeah. like, good job and, like, fuck you. Let's say, let's say it right. Corporate dick sucking. It's corporate dick, <laughs> dick sucking, sucking. And I hate it. Well, that Are was we going to get thing. demonetized? Sucky, sucky. Probably. <laughs> but, yes. Damn, that's that was my one rant. I completely forgot about it. Until yeah, no, that was great. It's yeah. a good way. It's a good way to wrap this up, you know. Yeah, and we Don't are going to wrap up. Chill. We are going to wrap up here. And as ours, thank you for for listening. We just reviewed Dungeons and Dragons: Honor Among Thieves. We are going to take a little bit of a break here, um, but we will be back. Follow us along on Twitter at Was It Good on Instagram and TikTok at Was It Good Pod. Full episodes are on youtubecom slash Was It Good, and check out our website Was It Good Info. Till next time, don't be a corporate. Whore. Whore. Actually, you know, while we still have our audience, why don't you tell us what you want us to review next? Leave a comment down below. And we'll probably ignore it. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) I read all the comments. Goodbye.